Welcome back to Beneath the Beat Podcast. Without further ado, here is part two of our interview with Calvin Allen. So, like, I wanted I wanted to ask you, like, how was it going from one, you know, because you, you established yourself in Kansas City, um, you know, you have roots there, and then you moved to a completely different state. How was it? Yeah. How was that transition? Um, how was it like trying to make new connections? Could you kind of like talk about that a little bit? Yeah, man. Um, I mean, I came up here with my brother just to mainly, you know, well, first to to get a clean start, just to get away from some things that I was dealing with back home and a lot of a lot of BS sure. <laughs> in the yeah. music back home. So, but yeah, when I got here. Um, because my brother moved up here as well. He went to Western. He's a musician too. So I was coming up here to support him and to get a, a new start for myself. Well, it was a little tough at first. I, I mean, it was a challenge. I knew no one or no one knew of me. So they were like, you're just another just a new guy on the scene. So we went to, uh, we went to a lot of the jams. I was lucky enough because he went to Western, he knew where the jams were and he was in the music department. So because of that, we went to all those jams and I got to meet other musicians and started networking that way. And it's pretty much how it happened. (laughs) I went all to the jam sessions, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. For everybody listening, it's, don't be, don't be scared to go check out those jam sessions. Like really put yourself out there. You know, we've had, yeah, man. whenever we asked, you know, because we had, I don't know if you ever had played with Evan Taylor. Do you know Evan Taylor, trumpet player? I don't know if he played some West Side gigs, but I think he's mainly from, he's from he lives in Salt Lake. Yeah. yeah, he lives in Salt Lake City look now. Because like? I'm terrible with names. <laughs> he's like this he blonde, like? he's blonde, white kid. Uh, he's player. like 22, 23. I might have seen him around. Yeah. Good looking. Very good looking. Good looking. <laughs> Very good looking. Very good looking. Wears wears cool glasses. Um, dude, just dresses fly as hell all the time. All the yeah. time. Every time yeah, I see a picture of that dude, fly. I'm like, dude, you look so fresh. Like, what? You're just sitting by a pool. You don't need to look yeah. that good, bro. Just like, what are, you, what are you doing? Fresh by the pool. But yeah. he talked about, dude, he literally talked about the same thing. He was like, you know, I just went to the jam sessions you know, put, put myself out there. And that's, that's such a, that's a good thing for our listeners to know. It's especially when you relocate, just go to the, go to the local jam sessions, figure out where they are and then go. And then through that, you were able to meet, like you were able to meet like Adam, like all those West, West side guys, Nuri. Yeah. I met, yeah. Through uh, Adam Nuri. I met uh, Ben, uh, Ben on keys. Like I said, terrible name. Ben. Um, then Ben that uh, there's Ben that plays saxophone, and then I met a lot of drummers. I met uh, Madison. I met uh, yeah, Madison's a beast. I met Anthony. I met uh, list goes on. Man. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, I yeah. met uh, Jeff. Met yeah, Jeff plays uh, tr- saxophone. He plays sax and he plays bass. And then there's Henry on the stand up bass. That guy is a beast. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah. Ivan on keys. Oh yeah. Man. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know Ivan. Ivan. Woo. Yeah. Get that guy on an interview. He's a beast. <laughs> yeah, dude. He, he really is. He really is a monster. I, so I met him on a, on a gig. I don't know if you know, Jordan Van Hemer. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, oh, heck yeah. Yeah. I'm Jordan was like having this gig in Holland and I don't even remember how it was my friend, Jason, Jason Elward, Andy, if you know, Jason, uh, yeah. Jason and I got, got the gig somehow. I don't even know how it was like straight ahead jazz in a big band. And I was playing trumpet and, um, yeah, I met Ivan on that gig and I was just like, I didn't really know anybody else except for Jordan, my friend, Jason, who was also playing trumpet right. and, and then him and I became Facebook friends. And so that's how I know him now is really just through Facebook. I haven't even really talked to him. You know, sometimes I'll, we'll shoot comments back and forth and things like that. 
but all the stuff that he puts out on Facebook is so good. I'm like, holy yeah, shit, dude, he's a <laughs> monster. Absolute good monster. Quality stuff, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Some crazy stuff. Yeah. Crazy stuff. So, yeah. And we always talk about this, but there's like a vibe to the west side of the West Coast Michigan music scene. Like, what are your thoughts on that coming from a completely different state? It's uh, you guys, I will say this, you guys appreciate and support each other yeah. a lot more than what used to happen back home. It's a, the music mm-hmm. seems a lot better now, but there was not a lot of support of each other. Like you guys, you guys like immediately took me in and made me feel like I was Calvin Rogers or something. I was like, I'm not doing it. I mean, like, because of that, that's what really like has kept me here so long is you got the the support here. I just, I love it, man. And then you, you guys are eclectic. Like it's a, it's a mix of everything. Mm -hmm. Like you got funk, you got pop, you got jazz, you got country, you got folk, you got reggae, you got it all here, man. So, Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm loving it. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Well, and that's that's the difference, even from the east side to the west side of the state. You yeah. don't get that same. There's not that same vibe over on this side. Um, it's a little bit more, you know, it's a little bit more cutthroat. But like on the west side, it's just so, so embracing. You know, it's just so like we'll go play shows there, and then everybody from the west side will just show up. It's yeah. Like, yeah. like all the, all the musicians will just show up and it's yeah. just so cool, man. It's such a supportive for everybody. If you want to check out, if, if you want to check out an embracing music scene, West side of Michigan, Grand Rapids area. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> it's, it's, it really is. It really is amazing. Like the support that goes on over there is it's, it's unbelievable. Like I remember the first time that, that the band Andy and I playing played at founders and to see all these other cats that I had known from gigs all over the state, you know, show up to this gig and to like feel that support and have everybody come out. It's, it, it really is unbelievable, you know? And, and I wonder how, I wonder how uh, people who aren't from there can work on cultivating that, that same kind of support, uh, that supportive atmosphere where wherever you live, you know what I mean? Because I feel like right. that it comes down to the individuals who are there. You know what I mean? Like the individuals yeah. who are there are the ones who's, who are showing that support and creating, really creating that scene and that vibe and that atmosphere. So I don't know. What do you, what do you think the average, you know, everyday person in their own music scene could do to, to create more of that vibe? Man, I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but I can speak for myself. It's a, it's a, it's a humbling thing. Like when I go, when I listen to other people, I shouldn't be looking for if they sound trash or not. I'm just like, I'm looking for what you did good. And I'm like, Hey man, you did this great or that lick or that turnaround you did right there. That that was nuts. Can you teach me that? And in turn, I'm not too high to ask for help. You know, for me, I'm like, shoot, you, like I said, these younger cats are running circles around me. So I like that. And in turn, then whatever I have to help you to get to wherever you see me, <laughs> see where, you know, then I'll help you to get there. And then we just, we just help each other. I don't get the whole, well, I can do this better than you. So you should worship me. No, nah, I'm not like that, man. Yeah. If I ever blow up, you can still just run up to me and be like, hey, man, what's up? I'm going to have a conversation with you. Yeah, I love it. Nobody different, man. (laughs) Yeah, I respect the hell out of that. And we were just having a conversation with somebody about that the other day. Um, It's one thing to be an amazing musician. It's a whole other thing to be an amazing musician and a great person. I feel like that shoots your your in in people's perspective of you then that your musicianship just raises up another level because you're also just an awesome person who's willing to sit down or willing to talk to fans for a couple of minutes, you know, yeah. you're still human 
And that's awesome, dude. I, I respect the hell out of that. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, that's just genuine. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't think one man is better than the next, you know, one man just has some chops that I haven't, you know, studied long enough. Yet, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, man. So, dude, well, I mean, that's, I, I don't know what it is for me personally. Everybody, everybody who knows me knows that I, uh, I tend to, to freak out a little bit when I talk to musicians that I'm like, or not even when I talk to, when I see musicians that I'm just like, oh, Shit. you know like it makes I'm, that I'm, noise too i really do i really do i like literally i'm just like oh dude shit that's the that's the guy from the thing you know like and <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it's it's so hard to get over that and when somebody is is so supportive back and they're like oh yeah dude well this is how i did it like i will i'll never forget you know ghost note do you guys know ghost note oh. so yeah right right i, I know of course. Right? like come on come on so, uh, it was, I was in Detroit and ghost note was there at cliff bells, which is like a, I don't know if you've ever been to cliff bells. It's just, it's like a real intimate like bar, right? Like it, it looks like it's like straight out of like 1950, right? Like, it's cause it, it is, it, re- it really is like none of the decor has changed or anything like that. Like it, it really does. And so they got a small stage up of top and the rest of it is just like tables and shit. Right. And so we were there and I somehow snuck my way up to the front. It was me. And that was actually the first concert that I went to with my girlfriend, current girlfriend. Um, and after the show, like Sput came down and we talked to Sput and uh, Mono Neon came down and I got a picture with him and I talked with him and I, I'm the Ox percussion dude. Right. So Nate Worth came down and I was like, dude, Nate. And I started asking him questions and he was actually giving me feedback and he actually let me go behind his setup and take a picture of it. And I was like, like, that's, that was huge nice. for me as a player, yeah, man. you know? Yeah, yeah. I think that is, that is huge. I think that's really good, good insight as to how to cultivate that supportive vibe, you know? Yeah, man. There's, to, there's, there's like, uh, I mean, there's there's different aspects. Like I said, with with drums, there's different ways to love your instrument and dive mm-hmm. into it. Just just playing them is one thing, but like really yeah. researching and knowing your stuff or is knowing different things, like have different setups, different feels. Uh, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's it's a whole world to it. You know, I so. fe- I feel like I don't know this may just be me too, but like the, the setup you talk about setup, it's like ever changing. It always changes. Yeah. I change my setup constantly. Like for the longest time, I didn't have my, my second rack Tom. It's like my 10 inch. Mm-hmm. And now yeah. I have one, you know, <laughs> and then I would put it on the, put it in the floor Tom spot, you know, now it's, yeah. you know, mounted to my base again, you know, and it's like right. symbols, you know, adjusting symbols, it's just, yeah. it's interesting. It's interesting how that changed. I don't know, Calvin, if that, or if you feel, if you have like a pretty set thing that you do. Um, I mean, the, I'm the only thing that really stays set is the ride and the floor. Tom is always going to be yeah. on the right hand side somewhere. Um, but as For far sure. as the placement of it, my, my ride has actually gone from the like far top right corner. Now it's kind of closer. Uh, and lower. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And then I have like, like either a stack there now or a crash, but that's, yeah, I like yeah, to play around yeah. with, the, with the setup. That's it funny that you mentioned cool. that. Cause my, mine is like the opposite. I had like the low end for a while and then I switched it to be a little bit higher and it's just oh, okay. different, you know, it's, it's, it's cool. It's like different. I feel like, uh, in a way it, it's not like you're learning drums again, but it, it's just, it's like a different, it's a difference. Yeah. It's different. So it's right. It's a new it approach can, to it. It's a new approach. Yeah. It gives you a new perspective and it's fun. Yeah. And then you did like, I don't know, learning new things, new licks and stuff just mm-hmm. by mistake is very mm-hmm. fun for me. So I like yeah. to change stuff around just to see what mistakes that might turn into beautiful mistakes. Like love it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah That's man. so <laughs> rad. That's so yeah, rad. Man, I love that. That's one of the things I love about percussion. It's it's like 
it's when I was a kid and in band class and stuff, and I see these percussionists like building these weird rigs and, you know, building everything yeah. in the back and everything's <laughs> all like, like it, it felt like they could do whatever they wanted, you know, with their setup, they, they could do anything. And I know for me playing percussion now, it's like trying to, for the longest time, I didn't do anything with my setup. And I think it, part of that was like, I was afraid to, cause I was like, well, I know how to play this, you know? So I was like afraid to change some stuff. I was afraid to try to move my cowbells to the other side of my tambourine, you know? And then when I did that, it made everything else feel so much more comfortable. You know, that's just, it's, there's never an answer. It's whatever's right is yeah. right. Whatever feels good is good. You know? Calvin, I like yep. what you said though about the the beautiful beautiful mistakes. I think that's really cool. Um, yeah, man. Because I, I, most most fills and licks in music is somebody mistake is made a mistake and but it sounded good, so almost yeah. it I, and they recorded it or remembered it, and so I'm gonna play it back and now oh that's a whole song or that's a whole shit. That's cool, so, man. So I'm gonna can I, can I take a left or Andy? Did you have something that you wanted to say? You looked like you were I did, but you interrupted, so that's fine. Well, no, well. I didn't. <laughs> uh, uh. Um, no, so Calvin, I, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to ask you, like, since I know playing in church is a big part of your playing, um, how did you get started playing in church, and what was that experience like? Um, was it like, did you have to like audition, or you know, how how did you keep your spot, you know, and what was that <laughs> like? Um, so. I didn't have to audition. Uh, there was a church that I grew up in. It was called it's called Great Holy Temple. It was back in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, my whole family went there, and I just sat next to the drummer all the time. <laughs> my mom sang in the choir, and so I, by default, I was always at choir rehearsal. And like I said, she taught me how to play the drums, so I just brought my drumsticks and sat next to the drummer. Um, it wasn't like a whole like a whole roped off thing like we do it nowadays it was, it was kids could run up there if you wanted to so i, I mean for the That's longest cool. i sat there and then i got to play offering for the offering song and that's like where you start yeah <laughs> when yeah. you're a little kid that's where you get your start and so if you can handle that then you might be able to play we used to have testimony service and someone might sing a song so in between, like, like they would sing a song and then give their testimony and then they sit down and like somebody else would get it. So you might get to sit in for one song, you know, and then you just gradually got to play for the choir. There was a drummer before me, though, but as he got older, I kind of just filled in. And then eventually mm -hmm. he got too old. <laughs> yeah. Or he was just mm -hmm. like, man, I'm tired. I don't want to play. I'm like great because i have my sticks yeah <laughs> <laughs> now that you mention it you just hold up both <laughs> well funny yeah, man, now that you no, it was it. somebody it was someone else giving me a chance like yeah i said yeah I, i'll take a chance on you i made mistakes but i mean that's how i got my start in church so and then from there like i uh we didn't have a lot of other drummers in the church in my church so i didn't really have to worry about someone else wanting to play besides my brother um <laughs> my little brother but right. um but yeah and then as i got older i got a job i started working at guitar center and still oh, nice. was playing at church but mm -hmm. then other churches started to find out that i played and eventually they started offering to pay and i mm. had a talk with my current pastor made sure it was cool with him because he was a musician as well and he was like that's kind of how i got my start too so yeah you have my blessing i started playing at other churches that's that awesome. started teaching to me like the professional side of things be on time be ready have mm. your things with you <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, this is how I got this is how I got my start in church. I mean, church teaches you. I mean, yeah, it's church music, but it's a genre where you can. It's easy to branch out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, 
Yeah, gum stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you say it's church music, but I playing in in church with you was not like any <laughs> church music I played. Before. Yeah, <laughs> like like it's it's yeah. different. You know what I mean? Like I so I grew up uh, going to like the Methodist church and the mosque, and in the mosque, the only music we really had was like the call to prayer. You know what I mean? Like that. Okay. That was, that was it. There's aside that we have like feasts and stuff where like a bunch of people will cook and, you know, got tables of food and everybody sits and we have fun, but there's not really like music and stuff. Um, I don't know if everybody's experience at a mosque is like that, but that's every mosque I've ever been to. That's, that's what it is. Uh, and then when I was at church with my, uh, my grandparents, um, it was usually the only music that we would have was like one guy standing up there playing guitar and singing. And then we'd have a choir full of, uh, uh, old people who <laughs> didn't necessarily know how to sing, you know? And then you hear <laughs> the choir director being like, Oh God, I can't get those. I can't get them to sing. <laughs> but that's, that's it, you know? And, and, again, playing in church with you was like a totally different experience. It made me like want to go to church, you know, I'm like, mm. this, it was, it's me. I'd go there just for the music, you know, like, yeah, man. it's awesome. It's, it's what awesome. a lot of people come for. That's, yeah. bad to say. Mm -hmm. That's what a lot of people <laughs> get into church for or get back into church because yeah. the music is what got them there or what attracted them there. So, yeah that's awesome there's nothing wrong with it yeah no not at all <laughs> i mean i kind of have like the same the same like i went to a lutheran church and man the music was uh you know i'm not gonna name the church or anything but like the music was just <laughs> kind of brutal it okay it was like it was performed well it was just like i don't i don't there's no connection for me to this i don't have a connection here you know, cause I, I've yeah. been a drummer for a long time and like, well, I was a kid, I would go to church and even they had like the, the band that played, but it was just like, there's yeah, no it, energy. It, there's no, it's, it, not the, <laughs> it's not the same, man. So it's, yeah. what a cool experience. And like, I, you know, I wish growing up that we had something like a little bit more energetic and like a little bit more you know like had more quality musicians because that inspires yeah. you to just be better yeah man i i mean i counted i it's, it's a blessing i mean i'm blessed to have grown up the way that i did with the people who i grew up around so mm -hmm. i don't take it for granted at all and mm -hmm. i just try and make sure that i build on that like i don't just yeah. let it go to waste so yeah yeah Dude, well, that's, I think, the coolest thing about, like, that culture of music. It's, like, it seems like the musicians are all so intuitive. You know what I mean? Like, everyone is listening. And, uh, yeah. like, I'll never forget. I have never seen it in my life except playing in your church where the singer is doing chord numbers to the piano player. Never seen it before wow, in my life. Nice. Never seen it. And yeah. it's, like everyone is so educated about it you know it's awesome it's so cool yeah you know yeah man it's it's uh it's just a it's just, it, we call it like flowing but i mean mm. the singer will start up and she may tell the keyboards or organists hey i'm gonna sing this in, in a flat or whatever and they're like mm. okay i know that song and then because you a lot of us learn to play by ear so I mean, when so we know we'll learn the numbers before we'll learn like the actual chord struck, you know, the chords or the names of your or the keys or whatever. Right. Yeah. So I mean, like yeah, like I said, a singer will get up and then he or she will just start throwing the numbers out. Hopefully not like out in the open, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like throwing numbers out and then yeah, one, four, five, one. <laughs> Still go to the four. <laughs> yeah sorry I was but i think that's i think that's cool too like you know as a young musician you're already being taught spontaneity 
And that's so important. Yeah. That's I think that's so much more important as a musician than t- like reading notes on a piece of paper, being spontaneous, like developing your ears and being having spontaneity and being able to like make correct choices or make good choices, uh, make different cho- choices and, you know, use your ear to guide you in the direction that the music's moving. Dude, yeah. that is such an educational experience. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, man, it's... I'm not going to lie. I used to be able to read music. Can't do it anymore for the life. For sure. But, yeah, this, I had to learn by ear. And I had to learn what felt right and what fit. And Mm -hmm. in the process of elimination, I've messed up. I've goofed. I've gotten so far away from from the tempo, from lost the one, couldn't find it somewhere in the forest. But, you know, that's how you learn, though. You learn what doesn't fit. You're like, oh, I'm not going to do that. That didn't sound good. <laughs> yeah. And that's another thing, too. It's like, especially being the drummer, like, if you mess up, everybody's just, you know, how the, it's like everybody just looks back at you and, like, you know exactly. <laughs> it's like they look up at you. It's like, ah, shit. <laughs> or they'll just, like, and they'll give you, like, that death stare, too. Like, yeah. And it's like, we all yeah. know what that is. It's like, well, and that's like so, like you were just saying, Calvin, that's just the best tool to learn from is that. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's falls, counting right on, on you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Man, I've just uh, I've done it so many times. And growing up in church, uh the church, like I said, the church I grew up in, we didn't have it was a medium sized church. So there were enough people for me to feel like I was playing for an audience. To mm-hmm. where if I messed up, it was enough eyes on me. Like, mm-hmm. so yeah, help mold me, man. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, that's that's so cool because like you can take that to playing gigs at bars or like just just sitting in at a jam. You know what I mean? It's mm. it's like a totally different level of musicianship that I feel like you have that so many people don't from that experience. Like you can tell, like you are a very intuitive drummer, you know, and and I feel like, especially with drum set players, that is not always the case. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, I mean, I've played with drum set players, especially uh, one in this call who's wearing a white shirt right now and with headphones who's just not into No, <laughs> I'm just messing. Just messing. <laughs> no, but like, I mean, I've played with drum set players before where it's like, I can tell they're not listening to what, what I'm doing, you know? And as, as a percussion player, that's, that's something that that's super frustrating for me is when I, when I could tell the drum set player isn't listening to me because then I'm like, Mm -hmm. I'm like, hold up. We are the groove. It's like, I understand you are used to being just the groove by yourself, (laughs) but like, guess what? Now we are the groove. I'm here now. Yeah. 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 So, and it's, and it's like that totally shows in your playing, dude. Like you, you are such an intuitive player. You listen so much when you play, you can, you can tell. Well, there's a lane you got to stay in, man. So. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very true. This is the truth. Very, very true. This is the truth. It's like, well, um, there is a, I think it was like a meme or like a cartoon where uh, it's like this guy, he's like sitting behind the drums. He's got like the Neil Peart drum set up, like just drums everywhere. And he's like playing his ass off. But it's just a picture. And it just says, the, and the person looking at him is like, wow, you're amazing. And then there's the next slide where it's like the guy with like the small setup. And he's just playing a groove, like a steady groove. And it feels mm-hmm. good. And the guy, the same guy was like, you're hired. <laughs> right. Yeah, man. Yeah. My, um, I have, I have a cousin that an older cousin that plays drums as well. And he, one of the things that he told me that stuck with me was pocket gets you paid. And mm. I didn't know what he meant at first because growing up as a young drummer, the last thing you want to do is play pocket. Pocket sucks. You think it's boring. You think you don't get to do anything. You just have, to, right. but man, pocket if you if you get in the pocket man there's so much that you can do in the pocket Mm -hmm. it's amazing but yeah like i said pocket gets you paid know your place stay in your lane play your part 
because and then you like I said, it didn't all feel good. Like don't I I wouldn't be I wouldn't play your like if you're using your shakers, I wouldn't be trying to play that tempo on my hi hat. Because yeah. then I'm mm-hmm. in your lane now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you're and if you're doing like if we're doing some kind of reggae you know, funk type thing and you're hitting the crash on the you know in these random spots and then I try and do a fill and hit the crash, we're clashing now. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, just let me give you your space then and I'll stay over here and I'll mm-hmm. figure something else out. But yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Pocket. Pocket. <laughs> yeah, man. Pocket. Dude. Uh, pocket gets you paid. Pocket gets a, you paid. That's such a good saying. That's such a good mm-hmm. saying. That's and awesome. uh, I feel like, uh, so I was actually just talking about this the other day. You, we all know Victor Wooten. If, if we don't know yeah. Victor Wooten, like, what have you been doing? Like, <laughs> uh, but he he talks a lot about playing with feeling first, more than technique, more than notes. I feel like that's the same thing that we're talking about with pocket gets you paid. You know, like, it's, mm-hmm. it's, he he talks about it like, if you you can play one note, but if that note has all the feeling in the world, people will remember it, you know. Mm-hmm. And if thinking from a musician's perspective, people will hire you. You'll be able to mm-hmm. make more money, and that's that's something that I constantly am striving for. And it's so hard to do to be that mindful in your playing where you can stay in that pocket where you're not trying to 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 do some crazy stuff all the time because that pocket, that simplicity, that's, that's sometimes the best thing. That's sometimes what the music needs. And then sometimes Mm -hmm. there's times where you can go off the rails and Uh, Oh yeah. There's, there's times for that, (laughs) but it's not all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, man. I, like I said, my church background, we were taught the music is the accompaniment of the lead singer and then i mean the in church the lead singer it's it's the message of course but yeah mm-hmm. we were to just accompany them we're just the background so mm-hmm. to us doing too much of this and, and then you get in the audience looking at you and then you're really going to have a nice talk at the end of the service like <laughs> what was that so <laughs> you didn't want to be that guy yeah <laughs> you didn't want to be that guy even if you oh. were like, killing it I was like, dude, that was great, but you're mm-hmm. out of line. And if yeah, you can get fired, just like the guy who can't play drums can get fired just because he didn't right. show up on time. So you got to know your Dang. place, man. Yeah. That's where I grew up. So taking that and then applying it out here, because these were my first out of church gigs when I got to Michigan. Like, I oh, really? Know. Yeah, I didn't really know like too much. I played in a couple jam sessions back home in clubs but never a gig of my own that i could call my own outside of church till i got yeah. out here so yeah out here when i met hannah i didn't want to play like i was kind of easy at first mm-hmm. and then she was like you know you could fill it out a little more her and her and colin and adam got me out of my little comfort zone and so kind of got a feel for it yeah <laughs> yeah well, Calvin, thank you so much for, for coming on the podcast tonight, man. It's, it's been an honor having you in and a, a very educational experience, you know? Oh man, Zach, Andy, you guys are the greatest, man. I really appreciate it. And like I said, it's been an honor. Thank you guys for having me, little old me from Kansas city. <laughs> so, and I'll see you guys around. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. See you around, dude. Thank you so much. Yeah, and for everybody, you can check him out on all social media platforms. Check out his Instagram. Um, you can check him out at uh, he plays with Hannah Rose and the Gravestones. Uh, his Instagram is Drum Boy Calvin. Check him out, uh, Calvin. It's been so awesome having you, man. For real, Thank you. it's been fun, guys. Thank you. Thank you.